Hi guys! Welcome back to our channel. So guys, we have another amazing vlog for today. So I'm not really sure if this is a tag video, but I've seen a couple of vlogs with this um, theme for today. And I said, oh, that would be a cool one to do for today's episode. So for today's episode, guys, what we are going to do is I'm going to share to you guys um, five luxury bags of mine and I'm going to discuss what's wrong with each one of them. So if you want to find out what are these, please stay tuned. Hi guys, Ron here, Soaking Budgetarian Fashionista. I vlog about the latest news about fashion. I do luxury shopping vlogs, hauls and unboxings. I also do bag reviews. I'm inviting you to please join our growing family by clicking this cute little icon here so you could easily subscribe and I could welcome you to our growing and loving family. Also guys, please do follow me on instagram.com forward slash Amirify so you could get daily updates and styling tips coming from me. Alright, so for bag number one, the luxury brand is Givenchy. So here it is on display. So let me just get it. So this is my Givenchy Antigona. So I have done a vlog review. So I want to find out um, like what fits in and an intensive review. I'm going to link it up here and put it on the description box. So with this one, this is actually one of my favorite luxury brand or luxury bag rather on my collection. So again, this is the Givenchy Antigona. The size is new. Um, it's very beautiful. This is the first edition, guys, um, of the Antigona. I purchased this one when the creative director is still Ricardo Tishi. So, guys, as beautiful as um, this bag is, so what is wrong with this bag? So, there are two things that I could think um, what's wrong with this bag. And first, um, Thing that is wrong with my Givenchy Antigona would be the material. So the material of my Givenchy Antigona, as you can see here, this is a box leather or a smooth leather, as you can see all over. It's not that the material is ugly. Um, the reason why I am saying that the material is wrong for this bag, it's because um, it's not really wrong for this bag, but for me personally, Whenever I am carrying this bag, um, I really need to baby this one because this type of um, material, the box leather here, uh, you could scratch this one very, very easily. So this one, I'm not, I kind of forgot like what year I purchased this bag, but I have this one with me for I think six or seven years already, and um, I. I was able to maintain still the good quality of the bag as you can see here. There are very minimal scuffings or scratches with the bag because like what I mentioned, whenever I'm carrying this one, so this one actually also has, um, I, I don't just carry this with me here in the Philippines, so I have already carried this one during my travels abroad. But again, whenever I am carrying this one, like for example, we're going to somewhere really, really cold. So it's actually really nestled um, right underneath my coat so that, you know, whenever we are commuting, like riding the train and whatnot, so it would not um, scratch easily. So that is the flaw number one for this bag. And the second flaw that I could think um, with this bag is the difficulty of um, removing or removing the strap so I could fully detach this one. So like what I mentioned, um, the version of this Antigona, this is the older version because the newer ones, as you can see here, so the clasp for you to be able to remove. So this is actually, this side is non-detachable. And then, so, and then this one, I think this is the only detachable part here, as you can see. So you can detach it, but you are going to remove the studs over here so i'm not sure why it's not focusing one moment guys there so there are studs so you need to remove that studs for you to be able to remove one side so it's now that i'm discovering that i could only remove um one side of the bag because honestly um since i got this one i just don't remove the leather strap so that's why i'm saying it's quite a flaw for this version because whenever i'm keeping this bag what i do is i just um fold the leather straps like this so if it gets twisted that is okay because they can fix themselves but i just do it like this like when how they store it um on the luxury stores there so something like this and then I'm going to put it inside 
the dust bag and keep it inside my cabinet. So I wish this um, version also I could remove the um, shoulder strap but also guys take note the newer version of Antigona yes you could easily remove the shoulder strap but I think what happened the flaw of that version is that it could be easily removed even though you're not trying to remove it because I think the closure that they use it's kind of faulty and I've seen a lot of vlogs here uh, people are complaining with that one so this is bag number one I love this bag still so if I could still recommend this to you guys definitely I would recommend for you to purchase the Givenchy Antigona but just be careful with the material so if you could choose a different material aside from the smooth leather then do that um, aside from that I think it's good to go for the Givenchy Antigona bag that's bag number one. All right, for bag number two, it's Fendi. It is my Fendi Micro Baguette, surprisingly. So actually, I have just vlogged this one on my 10 micro bag collection. I would love guys, I would love for you guys to see that after this episode, I'm going to link it up here and put it on the description box. So on that episode and on the other episodes that I have featured my Fendi Micro Baguette, I have mentioned a million times how much I am in love with this Fendi micro baguette but why did I include it in this vlog episode what is the flaw of this bag so it's not the size um, yes it is a micro bag but for me like what I've mentioned I love micro bags and when I purchased this one I knew what I was in for that you couldn't expect you that you're going to put your entire life with this one when you're carrying this bag so I was okay with the size so what is the flaw again of the um, Fendi micro bag so I think I have discussed that one on one of my other vlogs um, it is the difficulty of attaching the shoulder strap so this one so again this is the Fendi micro baguette just a little bit closer and then it comes of course with the um, gold it comes with two straps so this one is the first one so this is the gold chain straps that it comes with so wherein you could carry this one as a top handle or you could use this one to attach your Fendi micro baguette as a charm then it also comes with the um, longer shoulder strap so the flaw of this one is the difficulty of attaching the straps with the Fendi baguette why because the attachments or the d-rings is way inside the bag as you can see here it's over here this one can you see that guys so there that one so two so it's quite you know way inside there so there's a little bit difficulty of attaching these straps so let me show you guys i'm going to give you an example so give me a minute so it's quite challenging because again, the class, so the class is like this, there. By the way, guys, so like what I've mentioned, this Fendi Micro Baguette is no longer available at Fendi stores and Fendi.com because this is the original version of the Fendi Micro Baguette, which was designed and launched during the time of our beloved Carl Lagerfeld. But we could still purchase this one um, pre-love at any pre-love market like Fashion File um, and any other uh, pre-love bag. So guys, I am attaching as I am discussing this to you. There. So it's a little bit difficult. So the difficulty of attaching the chain strap would be, let's say, I would rate it from 10 being the most difficult. So if you are not well versed because you really need to do lots of practice for you to be able to attach the strap. So I would say around 6 to 7. There. So just to show you how I was able to attach it. One moment, guys. Technical difficulties. <laughs> there so can you see there so it's now attached to the strap so aside from that one um if i'm going to recommend the fendi micro baguette so if you are okay in you know having difficulty of uh, attaching the strap then that is okay then if, for example you may be asking what would fit so just to show you a little quick so this is a smaller fold so this could be uh, this is my 5s so you could use maybe your iPhone X or SE so it fits perfectly here there and it still has more space that's why for example you're going to ask me 
would I recommend this to you guys? So like what I mentioned, if if it's a non-issue with the difficulty of attaching the top chain handle in the uh, leather shoulder strap, then definitely I will still be recommending to you guys the Fendi Micro Baguette wherein you can get this one via the pre-love market. Yay, this is Fendi Micro Baguette. Alright, for bag number three, it's from Balenciaga and it is my Balenciaga XS Sharp Bag. Yay. So this one I've also discussed together with my Fendi Micro Baguette here under the 10 Micro Bag Collection. So now what is the flaw of this bag? As beautiful as it is. So again a little bit closer just in case you haven't seen the 10 Micro Bag Collection. So this is the bag here side then the back so this is a three-in-one bag so this strap here is fully detachable so you could wear it um, one as a shoulder bag two as a um, but uh, sorry belt bag or bomb bag in number three you could carry it as a clutch by totally removing the shoulder strap so what is the flow of this bag so this one so this remember guys when I have discussed my um, Fendi Micro Baguette. I purchased this one directly at Fendi here in the Philippines. So let me just do a size comparison here. So there. So this one, when I purchased it directly from the Fendi Boutique, I know what I was in for. That yes, I am. That I was like completely happy that I am purchasing a micro bag. But this one for the Balenciaga XS um, Sharp Bag, I purchased this one at via italis.com so like what I mentioned this is the only bag with my entire bag collection that I have purchased online because I have this policy on with myself that I would prefer to purchase bag uh, directly at the boutique aside from the store experience you would be able to see you would be able to try it on you would be able to look at it see the size see what fits so this one as detailed as the description of Italist. Again, guys, if you don't know what Italist.com is, they're like Luisa Via Roma or Farfetch.com. Um, they're mainly based in Italy. Um, then they always have good sale. This is not a sponsored post, guys. So, anyways, so it's very detailed. Perhaps I'm going to do a screenshot on how they describe the bag. Plus, of course, it comes with multiple photos of the bag. Then it comes with the size, like for example, the length. Um, the height and the width everything is described on the website so what I did was just to make sure because again the one of my criteria when purchasing a bag which is I feel if I'm purchasing a non micro bag definitely I would want um, my phone to be able to fit inside the bag so what I did just to make sure if this is the correct size I cut up a piece of paper with the size provided on the website then I check whether my phone so my phone is a little bit bigger it's quite it's charging it's a 6s plus I tested it on the piece of paper that I cut with the size then it seems that it fits okay so now I purchased this and this was shipped internationally via FedEx I received it I was so happy unbox it um, it's the perfect um, bag for me that I think but then the time comes or came rather that I need to try my phone I had difficulty in putting in my phone so this is a smaller phone this is a 5s plus with the Moschino cover as you can see here so it has two compartments guys there can you see so it has the main compartment here and one pocket in front so um, the reason also for the smaller phone it does fit there but difficult so as you can see here it's already eating up the entire space of the bag here so can you just imagine because again the 6s plus is way bigger than my 5s so I wasn't able to fit my phone and the reason why I wasn't able to fit my phone although I did everything on my end like for example I cut up the piece of paper with the correct uh, measurement the reason was I didn't account this one here on the side can you see so it's like um, an accordion style as you could see over there on this portion here on the side it's slightly going in so it's eating up a, a little bit of space on both sides so maybe if you're going to add up it's eating up half an inch on one on 
this side and half an inch on this side. So therefore, I'm unable to fit, uh, fit my phone inside this bag. So that is one flow of that one. I was a little bit surprised that the size of this one is a little bit smaller. And the second flow of this one, yes, it's a three-in-one bag, but um, one little flaw that I could think right now is the shoulder straps here. So because for me, I love also my bag that I that I can and I would be able to carry as a shoulder, uh, crossbody bag. So as a crossbody bag, it's impossible because as you can see, the length of this one, it's quite short. It's like good only as a shoulder bag. But the good thing about this one, I was able to create a hack. I'm going to put a photo here wherein I was able to remove the strap because the strap here is fully detachable, like what I mentioned. And then I was able to attach a longer um, shoulder strap wherein I can be able to wear this now as a crossbody bag there so now for conclusion with the balenciaga sharp um, excess bag so this one i'm not really sure if it's still available via um, balenciaga.com or balenciaga boutique but if for example you are eyeing for this kind of bag this size um, and it doesn't you know you don't have any issues for example with me when i when i got this one i had issues um, that it uh, I was able to fit fit in my phone then yes I would still recommend this to you because this one um, you are getting you know um, the best cost per wear because again this one is a three-in-one bag it could transform from maybe a day bag to an evening bag by just of course removing and transferring the shoulder strap there Balenciaga sharp bag all right for bag number four and five so it's from the luxury brand Louis Vuitton and the very first one is my vintage papillon bag so here it is Chan. so it actually comes with two pieces so this one the mother papillon bag as you can see and it comes with the baby papillon bag which is so cute so again guys I have made um, a bag review of this one going to link it up here put it in the description box so this one the baby papillon bag so this is a bag charm that you can attach to this shoulder strap here there so you could carry it like this and then you could remove it use it individually or use it on your other bigger bags so this one is a vintage bag I purchased from my best friend maybe I wasn't really sure if it's year 2010 11 or 12 but it's been with me for um, years and years now um, I love the epi leather it's very structured as you can see here um, and then I actually went during my review if I could remember it correctly the manufacturer date of this one is around year 2000 or late 1990s so as you could see so this is at least 20 year old bag but as you could see um, it still is you know has a good feel actually it still looks like if I'm going to rate it I would still rate it 8 over 10 looks still new it doesn't it's not re, it's not showing you know scuffings or scratches with the bag so what is wrong with this bag what is the flaw of my LV or Louis Vuitton Papillon bag why am I including it here so th there's actually one flaw that I could think of this one it is when I purchased this one it didn't come with a um, shoulder strap or a crossbody bag so even the if I remember it correctly even the monogram version of this bag it also comes with the mother papillon bag and the baby papillon bag. It still doesn't come with the shoulder strap. So that is the only flaw of this bag. But for me, um, I, I'm not really considering it as a flaw because when I purchased this one and I know that it didn't come with the shoulder strap. So of course, we have our own collections, right, of our bags and definitely we would have somewhere lying around on our room a shoulder strap plus you could actually purchase a separate shoulder strap maybe from Louis Vuitton or from other resellers and then so I am just doing a hack so I am attaching the shoulder strap one here in front and the other one at the end 
So that is the only flaw of the Louis Vuitton Papillon bag that I could think of because this is a very beautiful bag. So like what I mentioned, this is a 20-year-old bag. Um, yes, it is a discontinued Louis Vuitton bag, but again, if you are going to ask me if I'm going to recommend this to you because uh, this is still available at any pre-loved stores. Um, and actually guys, I'm checking on the prices. Um, surprisingly, the prices has gone up from the time that I purchased this from my best friend. So definitely, it's a yes. I am still going to recommend to you guys um, purchasing the Papillon bag for a couple of reasons. So number one, the only flaw that I could think of is easily fixable by just adding your very own shoulder strap. Um, then the second one is Louis Vuitton, as you know, are launching um, new lines of Papillon bags. So this is actually a good um, purchase of a Louis Vuitton bag. Yay! Alright, last but not the least again from Louis Vuitton. Unfortunately, I need to include this one. It's one of my favorite Louis Vuitton bag. It is my Petit Sac Plat. Yay! No, not yay, but no. So this one I have talked multiple times here on my um, multiple vlogs here including the 10 micro bag collection and I'm also doing a separate unboxing with a little bit of review so again linking it up here putting it in the description box so again guys this doesn't need any introduction like what I mentioned this is um, one of my most favorite Louis Vuitton bag in my collection and this is one of the most recent bag that I purchased this was just purchased March this year um, I'm super lucky like what I mentioned that I still that I was still able to get a hold of a monogram version because I think the monogram is no longer available at boutiques I'm not really sure if they're still going to launch um, via Louis Vuitton.com plus the petite sac or the sac plat lines are on wage right now because as you can see online and on stores they are releasing a bigger version with the monogram canvas and the epi leather version as well so why am i putting it here what's wrong with this bag so this one so no i have no issues with the size because when i purchased this directly at the store i know what i was getting in for um guys i need your help with this one so this one whenever i am keeping my bag so this is stored inside their dust bags and then um so they're stored neatly inside their dust bag and then i would be keeping this one inside their louis vuitton boxes and then of course inside their louis vuitton boxes i would be keeping like silica gels like this so that to absorb moisture wait one moment there silica gels to absorb moisture and to end the smell as well so when i have pulled this out during my vlog and when i did the uh, video for the 10 micro bag collections i've noticed that there is an awful awful smell coming out of the of the canvas oh no it's not the canvas it's the inside guys so i'm not really sure is it there so actually there is a smell an unfamiliar smell that i could smell with my monogram canvas louis vuitton so as you know guys i just started collecting louis vuitton this year and this is my very first monogram um last week i have just unboxed my newest toiletry pouch and it doesn't smell like this because i think maybe i just purchased that recently so what do you think guys um the smell is like glue or a chemical because I've heard with one of the vloggers here, Super Jacob, that he mentioned for some of the toiletry pouches and maybe for a monogram like this, they are coating it coating it with some sort of chemicals. So I'm not really sure is it a protection for the monogram canvas. So for Louis Vuitton lovers, guys, please do help me out. What is causing the smell? So right now, the way I am keeping this one, so I have removed it outside the box, or from inside the box, I have removed it from inside, um, then I have removed it from the dust bag. So this is just, I'm putting it in the top of my cabinet so it would air out. So now, the smell. I think it's the inside, guys. I haven't spilled anything on the inside so I feel it's still the chemical that they have used. So please help me out guys. I need to fix this issue for my Louis Vuitton Petit Sac flat. 
But then again, would I still recommend the petit sac? But definitely, yes, I would still recommend minus the smell. So I'm not really sure where the smell is coming from. If I would be visiting Louis Vuitton, then definitely I'm going to tell them. But for the size, for me, it's a check. It comes with a shoulder strap. Yes, that is not detached or non-adjustable, but it fits to me perfectly. Then the vachetta is already pre-treated. That's why for me, I would still recommend my petite sac pack. But guys, please comment down below on how I can remove the smell. There, how did you like our episode for today? So again, guys, um... I'm still recommending most of the bags that we've mentioned today. Hope you enjoyed this episode. And like what I mentioned, I'm not really sure if this is a tag video, but I'm tagging most of my friends here. So please do check your names on the description box. I would love to see your future vlogs with this um, episode as well. Hope you enjoyed this and I will see you on our next episode, guys. Alright, so before we end our episode today, let's do comment of the day. I would like to say thank you to my newest friend, Convi Abroad. Thank you so much for subscribing to our channel and watching our vlogs here. I also love watching your vlog episodes. And again, welcome to our family. I will see you on our future vlogs. Alright, so again guys, I'm inviting you to join our growing family by clicking this cute little icon here so you can easily subscribe and I could say welcome to our family. Also guys, I would appreciate it if you could give me a thumbs up or like this video and please do hit that notification bell so you would see my uploads every Wednesdays and Saturdays for shopping vlogs. Please do follow me on Instagram.com forward slash Amirafag so you could get daily updates and styling tips coming from me. Alright guys, a million thank yous for staying with me in this vlog episode. I hope you enjoy that. Please do stay tuned on Saturday. We have another shopping vlog going live. I'm super excited to share that to you. So please stay safe everyone. I will see you soon. Bye!